right, folks, we're outside here on this beautiful day at the Freer Mind Conference with Outside the Box's own Alex Hansry. Good to see you, Alex. Good to see you, Bob. So the talk that you gave today, you're going to be putting it in PDF form and making a film about it at some point? Yeah, I had about 55 minutes for my presentation, but I had about 250 slides. Wow. So I think that it's really important that people know how the changes in the sun are affecting life here on Earth affecting the solar system, how the magnetic field is changing, and how that affects us. And I think there's a lot of uh, polarized worldviews out there. Sure. You know, you got some people that say we're all going to collectively have a shift in consciousness, which I don't see happening because that's assuming that everyone's going to wake up. Then you have others that think that the, you know, the world's coming or that the new world order is going to win, uh, be successful in their attempt to control everything on Earth. And in my opinion, that violates the free will of those waking up. It leaves no room for miracles, and it places the new world order at some sort of uh, creator level. And I don't think that's mindful. So by looking at the sun and the cycles, we can see how we've gone through change all throughout time, whether we're looking at cycles of wars, whether we're looking at cycles where we've gone through uh, many ice ages, uh, or cycles where we've seen the rise and fall of civilization. Author Maurice Cottrell does a lot of research in this particular area. Um, parallels between solar peaks and uh, the amount of earthquakes taking place. So I think what we're looking at is a larger body of data that uh, people that are just beginning to wake up should look at and expand the data because we're about to go into the peak of this solar cycle. NASA initially projected it would be 2012. Huh. There you go, there's that date. So a lot of people thought that on December 21st, 2012, we would get a massive solar flare that would end the world as we knew it. And there was a lot of propaganda on TV and Hollywood propping right. up this myth. But just because we're not in 2012 anymore, it doesn't mean that we're still not going to see changes with the sun. This isn't about one day. This is about the whole cycle and what the intensity is going to be like of the next cycle, which could be even more intense. So, so what is it that we have to, to fear or not fear about the sun? I, I know that we're extremely vulnerable for an electromagnetic pulse to take down the grid and ruin you know, our infrastructure. Is, is that what, what we should be looking at here? Or There's is there more things to, to look at? Okay, tell me. First, we'll address that, and then we'll get into consciousness. So there's been a number of studies worldwide that have confirmed that if a solar flare that took place during the, uh, the 1859 Carnotin event, which shut down right. the grid at that time, if it were to happen today with the issues we're seeing with our magnetic field, not only magnetic north moving, but holes being found in the magnetic field, uh, there's more potential for even a medium-sized solar flare to have the effect of an X-class solar flare. So they're concerned that their satellites, GPS, uh, I would even say aspects of the military industrial complex could be dramatically affected by such an event. And while the History Channel presents it as an end of the world scenario, you can look at it another way. A that beginning of the world scenario. Maybe the powers that be foresee that their Tower of Babel is about to collapse. Huh. And something's going to happen that they can't control. And so, one of the things that I mentioned in the lecture is we should ask ourselves a couple questions. Is there a fear at the higher echelons of government that the system of control could come down and they can't or will not be able to control us when their technology is disrupted? Well, maybe that's what they're preparing for. You know, we wonder why they're buying billions way. of rounds of ammunition and getting right. all these things. And we think that it's, you know, it's, it's because of uh, wanting to just simply take the dissidents and put them in FEMA camps. But no, there's got to be some sort of precursor event that inspires people to go batshit crazy. And look at the world situation, the tensions with Russia and China. Here's why NASA's really concerned. North America, where we are and most of the viewers are, is in closer proximity to the North Pole, which makes it more vulnerable to the effects of solar activity. So, we may see something that impacts our country more than others. Meanwhile, China and Russia continue to build a record number of underground bases, some of which they plan to put their people in. There's no official plan for the people of the United States. And here's what's crazy. They gave trillions of dollars to the big banks. 
worked right. on in 2008. With the bailouts, yeah. To fix the power grid, to create redundant systems, to, to uh, prepare in some form, shape, or way, it's estimated to only be about $100 million. The House of Reps tried to push a bill uh, to reinforce the power grid, and the Senate shut it down and removed all language to the power grid. Meanwhile, we see our government building underground bunkers. We see what's going on in Denver. Sure. And speaking of Denver, you, you believe strongly that, uh, and you're based out of Colorado now, uh, have you had any experience with uh, the folklore of the Denver International Airport? And correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't several agencies moving to Denver, setting up their headquarters there? And, and they started they doing this years as a ago. New capital, perhaps. That and, would be? and this gets into this gets into the stage World War III scenario is what you're touching on. There's a reason there's prior knowledge about events that will be manufactured likely in the future. So they've already been getting away from the West Coast. They've already been getting away from the East Coast. Some of it started before 9-11 and a lot of this is in relation for that event. Joel Skousen makes a very important point though. Colorado Springs is not safe because Peterson Air Force Base was moved out of the mountain into the open. And he thinks that's been done deliberately by the powers that be in control of this government right. to allow the other powers to attack. And that this whole scenario, in his mind, is to create a merger between Europe and the United States as this conflict takes place, to which the NATO forces respond to China and Russia and right. therefore eventually win the war. And, and this gets into a lot of really complex areas, but. The period that I suspect that this could happen, although there's always a chance that maybe we can turn things around and awaken people to what's going on, but at the rate we're going, right. say things continue, um, I feel strongly something about Solar Cycle 25, which is the period between 2021 and 2025, and what could follow that. It doesn't mean that uh, the end of the world's coming, but they seem to want to, in my opinion, pull the trigger for World War III at that point in time. Right now, in this period of time we're in, between 2013 and 2020, more manufactured internal threats, more false flags domestically, more of an attempt to get a civil war going, to, to go out on their channels, the media, owned by just a couple corporations, and basically announce we're coming for your guns. Multiple publications about the billions of bullets that have been purchased. And people respond to this and they go, holy shit, they've declared war on us. We gotta get ready for this. They're not gonna take our guns. Fuck that, fuck them. And they start getting angry. And what I feel intuitively is that's the agenda. They understand psychologically, naturally, how someone's gonna react. Sure. What did anybody expect the Iraqis to do when the US uh, armed forces came in there, NATO forces, lay down and let themselves get raped literally and figuratively? Anybody invaded, it's like Red Dawn's gonna defend themselves. So they're already telling people in plain sight what they're planning. Those that are somewhat aware of potential threats that they or their family may face are responding. Not all of them know that they're being baited into this. And they, people need to think, Bob, about how they channel some of their anger towards the government on Facebook. Because a lot that, of that tool's being used to data mine those people that will resist and you think about whether that's something you want or not well I, I often wonder with events like 9-11 and the most recent Boston bombings uh, with them being so painfully obvious 9-11 is very critical in this in this uh, explanation for What's a number that? of reasons right before 9-11 the sunspot started to increase that was the apex of the peak portion of Sunspot Cycle 23. Was that a result of 9-11 or did they know that would take place and then there was 9-11? That's a really good question. If they knew what the solar activity would be at that time. Because sure. officially NASA hasn't gotten that science down to a perfect work of art. Officially. They've changed their models but you know NASA, uh, we all know the background behind NASA, the connections to the CIA connections to the Nazis. Sure. So there's some truth we can get from NASA about changes going on in our solar system. All these storms and climate changes and atmospheres and ionospheres changing on all these planets, Bob. And it's like, wait a minute, there is something going on. But, like with the solar flares, how long have they known that? What information do they not disclose 
to the uh, to the American people because they're afraid of how they'll respond. 9-11 is also significant because this touches on consciousness, which is an even bigger subject. On 9-11, around the time of the first plane hitting the tower and the second plane hitting the tower, and both collapses, there are documentable fluctuations in the magnetic field of the planet. So Princeton University and uh, another institution, they started doing studies on how human emotion interacts with the magnetic field. You know, and David Icke and others have been talking for years about how the parasites, the archons, whatever's behind the new world order, they use fear as some sort of food or energy, the fear that, that they generate in human beings through the crises, through that, the 9 That might be more stage. literal than we, we would imagine, huh? It could be more literal than what we imagine if we're seeing evidence, potential evidence, of a manufactured event creating fear in the American people through the television networks and all the millions and billions right. that were watching that event live as it went down, like terror, terror hits the West, Americans under attack, Talhead's coming to get you, and that, that effect, they already were prepped for a decade with right. Chuck Norris movies and Delta Force for such oh, a there scenario. there was predictive programming everywhere you look, so. But the question is, how can we take this knowledge of how the same field that's used to control us Carp's a great example. Sure. That same field is what connects us all. Creates things like what's called the hundredth monkey syndrome, the interconnectedness. And how this is really interesting. Because we're talking about wars, we're talking about some intense stuff. But the sun, it's neutral. It's neither positive nor negative. The change that it brings is dependent on the level of consciousness of an individual that's basically having a bombardment of energy via solar particles coming into their body. If their energy is blocked, if they're in a lower emotional state, if they don't know what's happening to them, violence can happen. Suicides can happen. There's shifts taking place in the brain. We have magnetite in the brain. If someone doesn't know that all of a sudden you're going to start seeing things in a different way, they flip out. So we see an increase in hospital admissions, you know, for psychiatric uh, outbursts and things of that nature. Is that also connected to the moon? The moon definitely magnifies right. all the effects of the sun. There's also planetary influences over the sun. And things like when Mercury, Venus, or other planets are near the Earth or the sun or in alignment, it causes sunspots to increase. So there's a lot of factors involved in, uh, you know, how the how intense a sunspot cycle is going to be. Well, in the last moments here of our talk, what can we do to protect ourselves right. and use this to our advantage? I mean, because that ultimately is the question. We can sit here and focus on the fear and how the powers that shouldn't be have used right. against us, but what do we do to use it to aid? That's actually the most important thing, and all the other pieces of information is pretty much a stepping stone to get to this conclusionary sure. section, uh, of which I want to expand on in future work. But Maintaining a healthy body, mind, and spirit is essential as far as an individual solution before we get to what a group can do. Um, we have different levels of sensitivity. I'm a Pisces. I'm a lot more sensitive to energy, to thoughts, to vibrations than um, other star signs. Okay. It's a water sign. And some people that are more sensitive to some of these things, and there's a lot of other people, they need to work even harder to ground themselves. It can be difficult even being in a left brain dominated society, you know, because we become more right brain. And when this energy is coming in, there's new ideas that come with that new energy. There's new ideas for new um, possibilities to manifest. On a physical level, a lot of the reasons you see some of the violence, a lot of the reasons you see some of the conflicts is a excess of energy in the body. What we do is release the energy in the body, and through basic exercise, whatever someone's you know, favorite form of exercise, be it running, hiking, skiing, basketball, whatever, that's one level. But then there's body movements that deal with the energy in the hands. Tai Chi or Falun Tai Gong. Chi, ancient forms of martial arts, not the MMA, sure. and training without anger in your heart. 
and realizing that this is about the universal ki or chi or prana that's inside the human body. Okay. Sufis will spin around and around and around in order to tap into that spiraling force that's around all things. And Burl Payne wrote a book called The Spin Force. And in this book, burlbooks.com, it's his website, he documents how someone can build a device that detects the strength of the spin force around a human being. And he found that it's strongest at the time of full moons. It's the strongest at the time of geomagnetic storms. And when you look for this and you Google the spin force, you'll see a pyramid. Four sticks this way, four magnets. And it rotates either clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. And he's got one of these in a jar, and it's dangling from the top. So different people will come up and put their hands around it. Sometimes it'll move, sometimes it won't move. It seemed to be the calmest according to Burl's uh, research when someone was in a meditative state. But if their emotions were excited, whether they were positive or negative, it was more active. You can also get a pendulum. And if you hold your palm this way, it will go either circular, clockwise or counterclockwise. They, they also do that, that to, to try to um, right. figure out the gender of a baby. When a lady's pregnant, they use a very similar test, and if it goes one way, it's a male. And, if it's, and it, the accuracy on that is startlingly, startlingly uh, pretty darn high. It's really interesting. So, But I'm sorry, go ahead. When you turn your hand this way, uh -huh. the pendulum on its own will also start moving vertically. So I was messing around this as a kid, I'm going, whoa. There's a spin force in the hand. One other way to detect the magnetic field is the use of dowsing rods. Yes. Now that's all what someone individually can do. And of course, healthy water, healthy food. Fluoride free, GMO free. And many, many examples I can mention, but I want to I want to close here. Uh, yeah. Dealing with using your mind, creating things, renaissance of the arts, you name it. Music, creating documentary films, alternative media. Now what can we do collectively? Masses tend to come together during solar maximum. So this can either be done mindfully and be aware of what's going on, or it could be a chaotic scenario. Yeah, you know, not all protests are peaceful. Sure. I've seen some crazy shit go down in Portland. Yes. Um, <laughs> but expanding alternative media, expanding uh, independent communities, off-the-grid communities, or communities of like minds within the city, because we also need people in the city to do the work that